welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our CPR series looks at certain topics that come up in life, and we attempt to discuss them in a way that relates to everyone. At times, we bring in the arguments of those opposed to the Word of God in order to practice contending for the faith that God gave His church. It is our prayer that you will be equipped to give a defense for the truths of the Christian faith with humility and respect. We are back here with Burden Blessing Podcast and taking another look into our World Religions series. I'm Pastor Mark Tiefel and I'll be working today with Pastor Nathaniel Mayhew. Today we're going to be looking at the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, good to be back with you, Nathaniel. How are you doing? Very good. You've had quite a quite a bit of interaction with Jehovah's Witnesses. You used to be pastor down in Atlanta, Georgia, and there were quite a few there where you had quite a few interactions. Um, just to get us started, you know, m- most of our most of our listeners are probably familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses, perhaps coming to their doors. But uh, can just give us a little bit of an introduction, if you will, about what a what a conversation with a Jehovah's Witness is like. Say they say they come to your door, and for someone who may not be familiar with that, uh, take us through how that typically goes. Yeah, most people are probably familiar with the Jehovah's Witnesses in that very situation. So they'll come and they'll knock on their door, and and the majority of times uh, they're very friendly. They'll come knocking on your door and they'll just say, "Hey, we have some information. Uh, we'd like to give you this." And they usually hand you something like a watchtower track or maybe it's the Awake magazine. Uh, So they'll see if you're interested in that, and usually then they try to get a conversation going. They'll they'll ask something like, are you familiar with the Jehovah's Witnesses? Or um, they'll they'll have a lead-in question, something that has to do with the Jehovah's Witness organization. You know, are you familiar with with God and who God is? And so that's usually the way they get things started. The key when it comes to the Jehovah's Witnesses is realizing that they are trained to have that discussion. They will sit in their their kingdom halls and they will actually train people sort of apologetically, if we were to use our language for it, in order to have those conversations and to, to try to disprove things that Christians are going to say. One of the key things that they love to bring up, if you say, well, you know, I've got a church, I go to church, uh, you know, they'll say, well, which church do you go to? And, and you'll say, which church do you go to? And and uh, they'll, you know, you'll, you'll say, well, I believe, in, I believe in the Trinity. Well, you don't ever want to do that because they'll say, well, you, did you know that the word Trinity isn't in the Bible? And you'll just say, what? It's not, oh, sure it is, sure it is, I can point it, it's right, it's right here. And they will look all over and, and you won't be able to find the word Trinity. And they've actually gotten a lot of people because they think that the word Trinity is in the Bible. You can look it up in the concordance. Uh, you're not going to find the word Trinity in the Bible. And, and sometimes people then begin to doubt what they have been taught as far as Christianity. And I got in the habit when we were down in Atlanta, Mark, of asking the Jehovah's Witnesses when they would come to their door. I would ask them, when did you get into the, org- the organization? You know, what were you before you became a Jehovah's Witness? Nine times out of ten, they came out of Christian churches. But generally, I found out that they were brought out of Christian churches that were not teaching them the Bible. So they were prey for the Jehovah's Witnesses. They were exactly what they were looking for because that church had not taught them what the Bible actually teaches about who Jesus is, who God is, and what God has done for us. And so then, you know, they, they found the Jehovah's Witness organization wonderful because they were actually teaching them, quote unquote, what the Bible actually said. They were they were longing for that, but they weren't getting it in their Christian church. Sad, sad, sad story. Yeah, that, I've had some experiences too, and that's you really come away with that impression of uh, they have a preconceived agenda. They are on the offensive, we might say. They they have they have and and they don't often listen very well, um, and and you can tell that they the, the way in which they're trained is not really to listen, but to simply bring up one argument and then the next argument and then the next argument. So I think the the message for our listeners would be is, you know, when you do, if you do interact with Jehovah's Witnesses, be careful, recognize that about them. But hopefully in this podcast here, we can give you some tips on some of the subject content of the scriptures that you can use to talk to them. Uh, You mentioned 
uh, they, they fall short on com- on who God is. We're going to get to that in a second. Uh, before we get there, I'd like to just ask you, where get, can you give us a brief overview of how this movement started? I mean, w- when we talk about Christianity, we both teach, you know, in our schools, we teach courses on church history where we, re- we see how the Christian church has gone back for thousands of years. We can trace that back. It didn't just spring up out of nowhere. How, how did the Jehovah's Witness movement get started? Yeah, that's a really good question. It, it started in the 19th century, so it's not it's not very old. It hasn't been around for very long. Like a lot of Christian denominations, and we're going to make a distinction between the Jehovah's Witness organization and Christian denominations in a little bit, but like a lot of the Christian denominations, it got its start coming out of Christianity. So the founder of the Jehovah's Witness organization was a fellow by the name of Charles Taze Russell. That might be a familiar name to some of our listeners. He he had kind of fallen away from Christianity. He wanted to get back into Christianity. He started to study in the Bible. But his focus, like so many of these uh, cults are, was on the second coming of Jesus. And he saw the second coming of Jesus as being a spiritual thing, not a physical thing. And then, like like so many cases, the more he got into that, the more sidetracked he became. Over time, so this is in the late 1800s, uh, the, the date that's usually used as the, the foundation for the Jehovah's Witness organization is 1884. And that's when they actually started uh, this publishing house and producing literature and all of that. Even though he had been around and meeting with people prior to that date, that's really when it got his formal organization uh, as far as, uh, you know, what we might call it a legal entity, so to speak. So it came out of a Christian view of God, but what happened is over time, all of those teachings that were in Christianity, little by little, they were left behind, they were rejected, and a new religion then develops. So you have a couple of different leaders. Uh, Charles T. Russell was the very first one. You get a couple of writings. He wrote a lot. He said that the only way to really understand the Bible is to basically read what I'm telling you about God's Word, and that's always a danger when you have somebody who says, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Well, that's a, that's their same model today, right? It In is. Their witnessing. They, they, won't use your, they won't use your resources. They have to use their periodicals and their magazines and whatnot. In, in fact, when they come to your door, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, Mark, but when they come to your door, when I was down in Atlanta, I usually had tracks available because they would come all the time. And they would they would give give me some information and I would take it and I said you know I'll take yours if you'll take the one that I have, and generally they would say no you know we, we don't want to take what you have, and that that's a that's a warning sign too there's a red flag when <laughs> they're willing to give out information but they're not interested in learning more they don't want to expand their horizons they don't actually want to consider the other side from your perspective. They only view that from the Watchtower Track Society, their viewpoint. And that, that should tell you that they're not, they're not at all objective when it comes to truth. They're, it's very one-sided. So really what we're dealing with here is uh, in the grand scheme of, of the Christian church, uh, and, and again, we don't characterize them as a Christian church, but in the grand scheme of our faith, they are a very new organization, a very new uh group as far as that goes and that that to me is also a red flag in and of itself that okay you've had all these christians practicing their faith for these many centuries but really the true faith didn't come around until the 19th century right that's pretty out that's a pretty outrageous and and frankly arrogant claim uh, on their part and so that 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 in and of itself is a red flag along with some of the tactics that that you mentioned well not only that but think about what that says about god well, yeah, to, to conceal well, he, the he really, truth for that. He long. really fell down on the job if if he missed the first, you know, five thousand years of Christian history or or world history. You know, what was he doing in you know before the time of Christ? What what was he doing up until 1884? You know, where was he yeah. if yeah, it didn't exactly. get it started until then? So it really is a slap in the face of God as well. If you say it's not just arrogance on their part, but it says God, you're stupid. You didn't do you didn't do a very good job. Yeah, didn't tell people what they need to know. Let's get into the big question about Jehovah's Witnesses. This is really what it comes down to for a lot of people. I actually just had a conversation yesterday with with someone that was talking about, you know, trying to understand different Christian organizations and different religions. And they mentioned 
Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and said, you know, really, I know we don't always say that they're they're Christian, but really, can't we consider them to be Christian? You know, they take the name of Christ, they claim to believe in the Bible. Really, aren't they Christian at the end of the day? Uh, I think that that's very, very easy for a lot of people to think, perhaps for the untrained individual who doesn't know a lot, they would just assume that, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are Christians as well. What is what is the actual accurate answer to that question? Are they Christian or are they not? Well, l- let me let me respond with a question: Is the devil Christian? Um, no. No. All right. So, <laughs> the devil used the Bible, right? He brought the, the Bible to Jesus, and he said, "Here's what the Bible says. Uh, do it." Just because somebody uses the Bible doesn't mean that they are a Christian. The devil was using the Bible in order to undermine Christianity, to lead the Savior into temptation so that there would be no salvation for sinners, for human beings. And when you use the example of the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's exactly what they're doing. Just because they're coming and bringing the Bible to us doesn't mean that they hold the values, the truths, that they proclaim the faith of what the Bible actually teaches. And you're right, it is very important that people understand that even though Mormons look like they're Christian or Jehovah's Witnesses look like they're Christian because they will talk about Jesus, they will they'll bring their bibles out they'll even be willing to have you open up your bible whatever translation it is you can use yours it doesn't mean that the teachings that they present are christian and as you take a look at the teachings of the jehovah's witness organization we we usually talk about three foundational teachings for christianity one of those is the doctrine of the trinity that god has revealed himself as father son and holy spirit the jehovah's witnesses reject that doctrine they said nope jesus is a lesser god he is not uh, the same as the father and that leads us into the second and that is the deity of christ the fact that jesus is true god they said yes he is a god but he is not the true god he is not equal with jehovah so you've got two checks already or two strikes in connection with the main teachings of christianity that tell us this is what a christian is the deity of christ the trinity the third would be the fact that we are saved by God's grace, and guess what? It's a strike there, too. Uh, it's all about a religion of works when it comes to the Jehovah's Witnesses. So it's not about what Christ has done for us and that we are saved by God's grace through faith. We are saved by what we do, which is what motivates them to go door to door. So three strikes and you're out when it comes to the Jehovah's Witness organization. The three foundational teachings that tell us what a Christian church is, they reject all three of those. The doctrine of the Trinity, the deity of Christ, and the fact that we are saved by God's grace through faith. So it is not at all a Christian religion. Do not be deceived. They are undermining everything about Christianity by by their teachings. Yeah, you really have to get past appearances and get into what they actually teach, which is a healthy exercise for analyzing any any faith, any religion, any church. You, you can't judge based on appearances. You know, you mentioned how even Satan uses scripture. That's a good that's a good illustration there. I, I also think of you know like the religion of Islam. They recognize Jesus as a prophet. They date their history back to the Old Testament. They would even call it God's word. But where do they go astray? They deny the Trinity. They deny that Jesus is the Savior. And the very same very same stream, if you will, that of thinking that. Jehovah's Witnesses are in a complete denial, not only of who God is, but what he has done. Um, and, and yeah, at that point, it doesn't matter how you look on the outside. It doesn't matter what your building looks like, what you say you believe. If you deny those things, you are not Christian. Right. And we have to be very clear about that. I think of Colossians 2.9 where it says, In Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It doesn't get any clearer than that when it comes to how we should view Jesus as our Savior. Um, and, and, and such a simple passage like that uh, is being rejected outright uh, in, in the Jehovah's Witness organization. So yeah, I think I think it it's not easy. It can be offensive, but it's very important that we be clear with ourselves and and also when we talk to Jehovah's Witnesses that this is a major difference. We are not all part of the Christian family. Uh, you cannot deny Christ and, and be part of that family. Well, you know, another passage you mentioned the Colossians two passage, which is a very very powerful passage in in teaching the deity of Christ. 
but another passage that I think is is valuable or important is what Jesus said about himself. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to make a distinction between Jehovah and Jesus, Jesus is still the only way. He's the only way to salvation. It's through him and what he has done for us. And again, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they reject that truth. Like you said, you want to get into actually looking at the teachings, and you won't have to go very far in a conversation with the Jehovah's Witnesses for them to reject the doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine of the deity of Christ, and the fact that eternal salvation rests entirely on Christ. They, they have no bones about rejecting those three doctrines. Um, and so, you know, you can just ask them up front, they will flat out tell you that they reject those doctrines. Uh, yeah, so that, that's right. That's where I always go right away with them. Right, is to it's, it's say, okay, we can talk about all these other things about the end times, or they, they've got theories about the archangel Michael and right. all those types of things. But let's get down to the person of Christ. Right, and I've the, the most successful times I've witnessed to them is when I've quoted Isaiah seven fourteen and Isaiah nine six because that comes from the Old Testament where Jehovah revealed Himself so so demonstrably, and it says very clearly that this child to be born, this son of God, would also be the everlasting father, would be God incarnate. Right. And, and I have yet to get an answer for that. That's right. when they stop coming to the door, right. yep. <laughs> which is usually what will happen. Is if you if you bring up a point that they can't answer, they, they'll usually leave you alone. Um, last question I wanted to get to, which really kind of flows out of this thought that we had about, about where they go astray in the person of God and, and Christ, is when they interact with you, they're going to want to use their translation of the Bible. It's called the New World Translation. There's some things we should recognize about that translation. Can you share some some of the information about what we should be concerned about with that translation? First of all, it's not a translation. So, yeah, you know, it has that title in there, the New World Translation. It's a misnomer. It actually isn't a translation at all. Translation means you're going from the original languages of Hebrew or Aramaic or Greek, and you're translating each word into a different language like English. That is not what the New World Translation really is. In fact, there's been all kinds of uh, historical evidence, ev even legal battles during the history of the Jehovah's Witness organization that proves that the people that were involved on the translation committee of that that, that book didn't actually know the biblical languages. Uh, they did tests in Scotland and other places with the main guy that was on there. He couldn't translate. And so a better and probably more accurate word to describe that is the New World Paraphrase. It is not a translation of the original language, and there are a lot of preconceived notions that are implanted into it. So, for example, probably one of the most familiar verses in it is John 1.1. 1, 1. We're familiar with that verse that says, In the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. A, pr we, a proof passage that Jesus is God. That's correct. It's a, it's a proof passage for the deity of Christ. And what they do is they change that to the Word was a God. In other words, he was God, but he was a lesser God than Jehovah. He wasn't the same. That is not in the Greek. It's not in the original, but they insert that because the idea, the doctrine that they want to teach is then supported by the translation or the paraphrase that they have come up with. And there are all kinds of examples. If you go through your own Bible and you find these proof passages that we were talking about, many of them are either stripped and reworded in order to not emphasize the deity of Christ or the doctrine of the Trinity or whatever. They view the Spirit not as a the third person of the Godhead, but a, uh, an impersonal force. And some of their translations will bring out that idea of this, this uh, movement, you know, as opposed to an actual being, a person of the Godhead. So you will find all kinds of problems in there. I have run into Jehovah's Witnesses that do bring other translations other than the New World Translation, and some that are willing to hear what your Bible has. So uh, there, there are those that do, but like we were talking about early on, ultimately their view of doctrine goes back to the Watchtower Society, what the organization teaches them, and to what the New World Translation, or paraphrase, uh, will say. So, Well, in that sense, it's almost – it's almost worse than a paraphrase, right? It because is. It, it, they, they come with their own agenda yes. and they, they not only 
you know, a paraphrase can be can be faulty because it vaguely, you know, characterizes the Bible verse in a way that's not very accurate. But they're actually trying to deliberately twist yes, yes. the truth that God is saying. So, yeah, very, very concerning. So be on be on the guard. You might you might have if you're going to talk to Jehovah's Witness, you might have to not necessarily use the New World Translation, but be aware of it. But recognize, be be ready to talk about some of the problems with it. Final thought here. Um, when we talk about this this movement, we always want to talk about how we best can witness to individuals in the movement. And and the thing that really strikes me about Jehovah's Witnesses is that it's a, it's, it's a very very few leading the many. I think the the people that I've often come into contact with are they're not bad people. They're not people that are trying to. Right. Um, discredit God. They're not. They're, they're trying to honor God. They're trying to follow God, but they're just very, very, very misled. Right. And and it's really kind of sad to see that they 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 put so much stock into what their leaders say and what their organization produces that they really almost don't think for themselves. Not that that's how we come come to faith with God, but how 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 is the best way of witnessing to people who are lost in this group? As you pointed out, I think one of the key factors is right away getting to the person of Christ uh, for for a person who is uncertain or unsure the best approach may be to just have a track available especially if the, they come by pretty regularly and hand it to them and see if they're interested in taking them and there is a really good one if anybody is interested they would like to get that from us it's called Jehovah is Jesus uh, it is available I've used that and I like to put I've actually put the notes from the Old Testament that describe Jehovah and then the parallel verses that describe Jesus in the exact same way in the back of my Bible so it's with me all the time but if anybody would like to have that track Jehovah is Jesus uh, they can email us at, at our email and we will we'll send that back to them a very very valuable track you can even print it off it's a trifold and you can hand it out to people if they come to your door but to ultimately you want to get them to understand what the Bible says you want to preach the gospel you want to tell them this is what you're missing out on this is what Jesus has done for you and your organization doesn't teach that uh, so that's ultimately what we want to do in any witnessing to the Je Jehovah's Witnesses is to point them to the Savior that they do not have or believe in in their organization and so some good gospel passages are the ones that we really want to point them to who Jesus is and what he has done in order to secure their redemption it's not about their works it's about the grace of God for them. And I think that's the most powerful thing thing to be able yeah, to do to a Jehovah's Witness. The, what you're saying there is, is not just a, an argument that you're making. It's an opportunity right. to really get the direct gospel right away. The thing, about, the thing about the Jehovah's Witnesses is that they differ on the person of Christ, which gives us a natural leading point to get right into the gospel with them, like you said. Not just to, to prove to them anything, right. but to actually share what what their savior has accomplished and we know that that god has promised in his word that's what the holy spirit will use uh to work faith well th appreciate the discussion today hopefully our listeners were able to uh, understand this movement a little bit better and, and gain some tips on being able to share christ uh, with these individuals we certainly encourage you to return to burdenblessing.org for for regular blog posts po podcasts uh, we'll continue to try to get regular content out there uh, and certainly stay tuned for our, the next installment of our World Religion series. We hope that you will join us next week for another episode of Burden and Blessing Podcast. Our goal is always to bring you the whole counsel of God. Until next time, go in the strength of the Lord and preach the word.